Hello everyone, I'm Emma and I'm your storyteller for today. Tonight's story is how to not go to school. Parsley Mimblewood saves the world and it's written by Mike Ford and illustrated by Rebecca Sampson. And this is chapters five and six. Chapter five. How to feel joyful, disgusted, worried, angry, sad and hopeful. Wednesday the 1st of April 2020. In the corner of Beau's room we have a big wooden toy house. A couple of years ago we went to town to go to the cinema and on the way home we saw this beautiful toy house in a skin and mum stopped the car and put it on the back seat on top of me and Beau and we took it home. We sanded it down then painted it green and gold. It's called the Inside Out House because the film we watched was Inside Out. We went down to the river and we collected loads of interesting looking stones. Then we painted them with different feelings. I painted a big frowning face on a pointy red stone and called him Anger. And his big brother is a jagged black rock called Rage. Sadness is a perfect round pebble. Disgust is a large brown grey rock with lots of knobbly bits. Worry is a greenish stone that's just the right size to squeeze in your hand. And Bo found a perfect flat round skinning stone and said that we should save it to be joy instead of throwing it in the river. To start off with, Bo and me just played out stories with the different stones, although it would usually end with Bo shouting, Rage Rock! and smashing all the other stones with rage. Then we started to go and fetch disgust whenever Mum suggested something disgusting for tea, like but buckwheat and gherkin salad, or cold stilton and spinach soup. Now, any time I feel anxious, I fetch worry and squeeze him in the palm of my hand. The problem is, when I stop feeling worried, I just leave him lying around, and then Mum stands on him and she has to go and get anger, or maybe even rage. This morning, I saw Bo sitting in front of the inside out house. He was holding worry in his hand, even though it was slightly too big for his hand to squeeze. He said he was worried about Gran. I picked up sadness because she's just as good as worry to hold in your hand. I felt a bit sad that Gran was going to be stuck inside for so long. Normally, she goes out with all the other tiny old ladies and they do aqua aerobics in the shallow end of the pool and eat huge slices of cake in the leisure centre cafe. Above the inside out house, Mum had painted a big sign in her curly calligraphy writing. It's impossible to read because it's so curly, but she told us that it says, it's okay to feel that way. Mum came in and sat with us for a bit. Then she told us that she thinks we need a new stone for the house. She wouldn't tell us what feeling it was, or even what the stone should look like, just that we'd know when we saw it. So we all put on our wellies and trudged down to the river. Pretty soon Bo had forgotten about looking for the special stone and was just looking for dinosaur fossils. But me and Mum kept looking for ages and ages, until my fingers were frozen to icicles and Bo had made an enormous pile of dinosaur fossils. Eventually. I saw the stone we were looking for. It was under the water, lodged beneath a big craggy slab that I had to lever up. The stone was really small, about the size of an acorn, and it glistened. When you held it up to the sky, the light gleamed through it, and it sparkled like a crystal. I knew Mum would love it. That's it, she said beaming. What is it? I asked. It's hope. We took Hope home and introduced her to all the other stones and then Mum painted another sign to go above the house. She had to read it out to us because of the curly writing but it said, Hope is the thing with feathers which is a poem by Emily Dickinson. We wrote another postcard for Gran and then I thought all of this would be a good idea to include in my book. Here are some questions that me and Bo thought of. Are you worried too? Bo. Do dragons like soup? Bo. Who could you talk to? Me. 
How do your grown-ups feel? Me. Do dinosaurs like soup? Bo. Is it okay to feel that way? Mum. Chapter 6. The last chapter of my book. Thursday, 2nd of April, 2020. This is the last chapter of my book. By now you're an expert on not going to school. You could probably do it in your sleep. Pretty soon you'll have forgotten how to go to school. Now I've finished writing my book, here are some new projects I'm going to try. Build a sea wall across the river. Ask Tui to, speak, to teach me to speak Maori. Learn how to juggle pineapples like Mum. Teach Einstein and Meatball the dogs to perform tricks. Teach Bo to perform tricks. Invent an ape imaginary friend. Create a stop motion animation with the feelings in the inside out house. Phone Gran and write a report about all the interesting things that have happened in her life. Create a friend for Stickosaurus the stick insect. Investigate the number 10. Help Bo learn all the words to I Got Cabin Fever. Thanks for reading. If you enjoyed my book, please consider making a small donation to the NHS on the download page. Love, Parsley Nimblewood. And that's the end of tonight's chapter. Night night. Sleep tight. See you soon.